Hey, welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through a very quick memory guide for uh, Gskill Trident Z 64 gigabyte kit, but we're gonna run it with two sticks in 32 gigabyte mode to get higher frequencies. It is based on the SK Hynix dual rank ICs. And we're going to be running it on Gigabyte's ORS uh, Gaming K7 motherboard. Okay, first up we're going to start with uh, 2133 MHz. And we're going to set up uh, low timings, as low as we can. We're going to go into the memory settings and set up uh, 11, 11, 11, 22 timings. Voltages for DRAM are going to be 1.4 volt, 2.5 and 0 0.606. We're going to change the timings to optimum settings of 11 11 11 22 okay we're gonna be rebooting this here and we're gonna go into windows 10 we're just gonna verify that the timings came in properly with cpu z and then run ida 64 optimized for ryzen just to get a baseline to see what kind of bandwidth we can get and what kind of improvements we're gonna get as we move up in the frequencies uh, on average i ran this test about five times Okay, at 21.33 with C11, we're getting reads in a 32 gigabyte, writes in a somewhere around 32 gigabyte, and copy just over 31 with latency just a little bit over 100 nanoseconds. Okay, so we're gonna reboot now and go back into the BIOS. Next up is uh, we're gonna go and set the speed to 2400 MHz. Same, we're keeping all the voltages the same, 2.50, 0 0.606. And we're gonna just increase the CL timings just a little bit. We're gonna leave all of the voltage settings the same, the SOC stays the same. We're just gonna switch the timings to CL12. 12 latency, dear. And the truss is gonna stay at 22. I'm gonna save that out. And go back to Windows and double check our memory with CPU Z just so the timings are correct and that the motherboard didn't reset them. Okay, so at 2400 MHz CL12, we're getting we're getting around 36 gigabyte for read. About 35 and a half for write and copies, just a little bit over 33 gigabytes with latency dropping to about 91 nanoseconds. Back into the BIOS, we're gonna set now 2667 strap. Remember, we are running two sticks from the 64 gigabyte kit, which allow us to go a little bit higher in frequencies. CLs, we're gonna change the CLs to 15, 15, 15, and 32. Save that out. Double check that we have booted with the correct memory settings. We're good. Now we're running everything, the CPU at stock. At 2667 CL15, we are now getting over 41 gigabyte per second for read, around 40 gigabyte for write, and copy is somewhere in a 39 and a half range, and the latency has improved to about 88.5 nanoseconds or so. We're gonna reboot again, go back uh, into the BIOS. This time we're gonna switch to 2933 strap, so we're gonna get 2933 megahertz. This time we're going to have to bump this up a little bit to CL17. We're always staying with the uh, manual, advanced manual mode. We're not going to be using any XMP profiles. That will come later once the, uh, I guess, uh, well, 1006 comes out. Just quickly, we're going to verify again with CPU Z that we have the right memory booting up. Run IDA very quickly. Okay, so now we're getting just a little bit. The improvement isn't isn't large. So now we're getting about 41.8 gigabyte per second reads, 40.6 gigabyte for write, and around 39 and a half gigabyte for copy with uh, with latency dropping just a little bit to 89 
And so the next time we're going to be rebooting in and now we're going to be actually overclocking the CPU a little bit through this BLK. So we're going to be overclocking this a little bit. This memory right now maxes out stable around 3100 megahertz in this setting, but uh, the settings are going to be CL. 17, 18, 18, 1838, with a very slight bump on the DRAM voltages. Once we reboot back into Windows, there we go, the memory is all, all good. It boot up with the proper memory timings. And now we're gonna be getting 44 gigabyte per second for reads, 43-ish, 40 for writes, and some around the same, 43, to and a half to 44 sometimes for the copy with the CLs improving to the low 80s. Okay, so next up, and we're gonna run this kit in 64 gigabyte with all four sticks. And you're gonna see that the speeds for the memory are going to be a little bit lower, but the performance is still great and you're gaining twice the memory capacity and we'll see how this memory improves performance and later on we're gonna run some apps we're gonna run Sunbench, we're gonna run Corona, a couple of other apps, we're gonna run Photoshop and we're also going to run some games in another episode so next we'll be part two, thanks, bye